And a new report ranks all 50 states based on their efforts to protect unborn babies in 2023. The group Americans United for Life releases its life list every year and scores states based on their pro-life protections from conception to natural death including not just policies on abortion, but also assisted suicide and conscience rights for health care professionals. For the fourth year in a row, Arkansas topped the list thanks to the state's addition of nine pro-life laws in 2023. Vermont is at the bottom of the list, and Michigan dropped 10 spots after voters approved a so-called right to abortion in their state's constitution in 2022. And joining us to discuss this new report is Tom Shakely. He is the chief engagement officer of Americans United for Life. Tom, thanks for being with me. First, how does your team determine the rankings of each state on the life list? What exactly are the criteria? Yeah, so Prudence, our life list at Americans United for Life is a long-running ranking of the states, as you mentioned, from most to least pro-life. The way the rankings work is that every year, uh, the state legislatures, right, typically for most of them, it's kind of the January to April timeframe meet, they pass laws, uh, they consider laws first, they pass them hopefully if they're good, uh, and then we kind of assess what the state of things is. And so uh, in the last year's legislative sessions, for instance, we saw 59 at least that we know of pro-life bills uh, across the states mm. move forward. And we look at those bills and we look at the issues that they deal with uh, from uh, most pro-life, all those 59 I've mentioned, to a lot of other bills that are the opposite, uh, anti-life, hostile to life, or at least indifferent. Mm. And then we say, how do these states rank uh, across the spectrum of the human right to life? So abortion, certainly, um, but also all the other issues, obviously things like assisted suicide and euthanasia, um, but also things like patients' rights, uh, conscience rights, conscience protections for healthcare workers, all those kinds of issues on the spectrum from um, you know, conception through to natural death. We look at it holistically, uh, and we try to assess how the states are doing, and that's what produces our life list rankings. Yeah, it's an important resource. And, Tom, what are the biggest takeaways from the report for this past year? Any big changes? Anything unexpected? Yeah, you know, it's a great question. Every year there are big changes. Obviously, now that we're in this post-Roe, uh, post-Dobbs environment, states can do more than they were ever able to do under the Roe regime. Uh, the big takeaway is that, you know, states are showing their character. Uh, those who respect life are finding ways to protect it, new ways to protect it, better ways to protect it. And states that historically haven't respected life, you mentioned some of those states, unfortunately, at the bottom of the ranking, like Vermont, are finding, unfortunately, new ways uh, to do damage to life uh, or simply to, to enshrine a culture of indifference, purported neutrality to life. Mm. And can you detail some of these new laws enacted in Arkansas this year, which made the top of the list? It seems like a true model of what it means to be a pro-life state. Yeah, Arkansas, uh, you know, has been a leader for a long time for us. The fourth year uh, that Arkansas has topped the life list. And the reason for that uh, is because of really strong pro-life lawmakers like uh, Senator Jason Rapert and others in the state who are concerned not just with playing uh, a defensive game, which is crucial, um, but also playing an offensive game, actually going out and proactively enshrining laws to protect life and to create new paradigms that other states can follow. And so Arkansas and some of the other states there in the top five are there uh, not just because they've done good work in their states, passing nine life-affirming bills in Arkansas alone, but also showing other states and a lot of the, some of those states that are kind of in the middle of the rankings what sort of things they should be doing, uh, what sort of protections might be needed. Think of something like the, the FACE Act, right, which has been used uh, by the Biden administration, unfortunately, to go after pro-life advocates, sidewalk counselors, people who engage in, in peaceful direct action. Uh, well, uh, states like Arkansas are passing bills to make sure that uh, so the sorts of pro-life witness and advocacy that we see that's good, that should be totally permissible within our constitutional uh, system, within the understanding of free speech and uh, and, and public assembly and all those good things, uh, they're making sure that states can protect that sort of activity as far as they can they can go uh, without interference from the federal government. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Um, and unfortunately, Michigan is much lower on the list now than it used to be thanks to the pro-abortion ballot proposal that was passed in 2022. It led to essentially the codification of very Roe-like laws in the state, that Roe regime being reinstated. Yeah. Do you think this is a developing trend 
in the states. I mean, there are rumors that a ballot proposal like this could pop up in Arkansas, the most pro-life state on your list. So what's your take on, on how that's going to yes. impact uh, these pro-life laws? Yeah, no, you're right. And uh, of course, you know, states like Ohio, too, right, having unfortunately right. enshrined abortion through the ballot measure. Uh, Michigan and, and Ohio are unfortunate for that reason. And the truth is that, you know, when we look at the number of states uh, that allow for ballot initiatives um, for direct votes, direct democracy, majoritarian uh, numbers to peel away basic human rights that our Constitution protects, that are right by nature, um, there are a number of states that remain. Uh, you know, it's it's not that many states, but it's you know it's it's seven or eight uh, that that could still move to uh, enshrine this fiction of of a right to kill uh, in their state constitutions. Mm. The unfortunate fact of it is that the amount of money uh, that pro-abortion forces have to pour into these states to buy outcomes of the vote, unfortunately. You know, I, I'm a good American. I'm an eighth generation Pennsylvanian, a son of the revolution. Uh, I love our way of life. I love our system. But the unfortunate fact is that in direct democracy scenarios like the ballot initiatives allow for, money often dictates the outcome. Uh, and the fact is that uh, these these groups, so long as they're permitted to flood a state with money from who knows where, certainly out of the state, but beyond that even, who knows where it's coming from, right. as long as they're permitted to do that, uh, states are going to continue to fall. And it's very possible that we lose the remaining states that have those ballot mechanisms. Most states don't have it, fortunately. Uh, most states allow state lawmakers to do what they're there to do, to, uh, to be elected representatives for the good of the people. Um, but that's going to be a continuing uh, headwind for all of us to deal with. We shouldn't get discouraged by it necessarily, because we've always known that we need to fight in both the pro-life states we can fight in, uh, while making moves on the national level to get to a point where we have true abolition of abortion, true equal protection for every member of the human family. Right. So it's always a both and. The states and the federal government, we need to continue to work in both arenas. Absolutely. Well, Tom Shakley of Americans United for Life, thank you for joining me and for sharing all of that crucial information. We appreciate having you on, as always. Thank you, Prudence.